Yes, um, as far as astrology goes, uh, that is addressed in scripture. Now, I do want to say, so people know this, there is no Hebrew word for astrology because the word astrology is a more modern word. Okay. Um, so the, the way it's described in the Bible, the Hebrew uses different terminology, like um, they'll say dividing up the sky because that's what astrologers did because they were, you know, measuring things and seeing where the planets were, although they thought they were stars. They didn't even know what a planet was then. Um, so uh, like dividing up the sky um, or, or prognosticating by the sky um, or, or even bowing down to uh, the host of heaven. So there's different language that's used in the Bible to describe the practice of astrology, but it's very much present. Um, I think we see it really strongly in the book of Daniel where the king has his advisors, which include the astrologers, who are sometimes called the Chaldeans, and sometimes that refers to the astrologers. And so you've got them in Daniel, and you've got in Isaiah 47, that chapter is a condemnation of Babylon, and it's sorcery, and it includes the fact that it listens to astrologers. Uh, so God is condemning that. And basically, he says, you know, the astrologers can't save you. Uh, so astrology is addressed specifically. And uh, in other ways, astrology is a form of divination. And divination itself is mentioned throughout the Bible. It's even in um, the New Testament in Acts 16, where you have the slave girl who has a spirit. It's actually the, the Greek says a, a spirit of a python, which was a reference um, to the oracle of Delphi, who was a uh, what we would we would call now maybe like a psychic who, you know, sat uh, on this special place where there were all these gases, apparently, and went into these trances and then, you know, spoke out stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and this is very pagan, of course. And she was said to have the spirit of the python. So this slave girl was apparently kind of basically a fortune teller giving fortunes to people and follows Paul around. And finally, he turns to her and, and, and he actually casts a demon out of her. Um, now, that does not mean everyone who does divination is possessed. But I think what it shows us is that at the root of this, Satan is at the root of this. This is, this is something from Satan. It is not from God. That's what that tells us. So divination is condemned. And divination is when you um, are getting information from a supernatural source or and or reading a hidden meaning in something. So you look at tarot cards, for example, and you have all these pictures and you believe there's a message there. You believe there's a hidden meaning there. Or astrology, you're looking at the position of the planets and the sun and the moon, and you're saying, well, you know, Venus is in Libra, and, um, you know, the moon is in Pisces, and that means this, you know. So you're, you're giving an interpretation that isn't apparent. That's not apparent to anybody. That's something you have to learn. It's special knowledge. It's secret knowledge. So that's where you come into the aspect of the occult. This is all part of the occult. Uh, and so astrology is a very occult-based practice condemned by God. Now, I know it's so popular in the culture that and a lot of Christians sometimes think that there could be something to it that maybe it's actually originally biblical, you know, and it got maybe twisted by paganism or something, but that's not true. Because there's no validity to astrology. There's no scientific validity to it. Uh, the position of the planets in a certain zodiac sign, even that isn't, isn't accurate because the way we measure it isn't accurate anymore. Mm -hmm. And so um, even your so-called sun sign for when you were born has changed over the centuries. And it's changed enough that you're probably not the sun sign that you think you are. <laughs> you're probably the sign before it <laughs> oh, wow. in, in, in many cases. 
not all cases, but many cases. So there's been a shift in the actual position, the orientation of the Earth towards these constellations. And so it gets really technical, but it's not accurate. And when you think about it, why would the position of a planet have any meaning in your life? And why would God want you to know the position of a planet <laughs> in order to, to understand yourself? I mean, if you really think about it, it makes no sense at all. I mean, the and then you have you have something called the gospel and the stars. I don't want to get into that, but there are people who have tried to correlate the 12 zodiac signs with the gospel, and they've said that Adam and Eve were given the gospel through the zodiac. Of course, there's no biblical basis for this. All of the scriptures that are used for this have been refuted. I've done many, many Facebook posts on this. And um, God would not do that because that goes against his nature. God doesn't ask us to look for hidden meanings. He doesn't give us hidden meanings and things. And he doesn't want us to look to creation for answers. And that would be looking to creation for the gospel. The gospel is special revelation, and that comes through God's word. And Jesus came and gave the gospel, and the and the, and it's and we know it from God's word. We don't look to creation to find a message from God. So right away, you've got a problem there. People who say that are not understanding God's character. That goes against His nature. So, so there's nothing that supports the idea of astrology and the fact that you may think you you fit your zodiac sign or your maybe you had your chart done by an astrologer and you thought it was accurate. Well, there are all kinds of factors that play into that that make you think that there's confirmation bias. And there's something called the Barnum effect and the Forer effect. Um, these are ways that things can sound very true or aspects of them are true. And so you you latch on to it. And you start filtering things through it. And it's really, I mean, psychologists know about this. They know how it works to um, trick you into believing it. And they have done experiments where they, you know, they give um, like a professor who gave uh, supposedly uh, something to all the people in his class that was about who they were based on their birth date. And they all read it. And he said, okay, how many of you think this? this is accurate. And most of them, you know, so 97 or 98% of them thought it was accurate. Mm -hmm. And then he had them pass it to the person sitting behind them. And they saw it was the same thing. They all got the exact same thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> they all had the exact same thing. And I've seen there's on YouTube, there's some duplications of this, um, not necessarily with astrology, but with other things with personality tests and stuff. And then and, and he'll say the same thing to everybody. And they'll all say, oh, yeah, that's me. Oh, I can't believe how you you really pegged me, you know. So I, I, I watched a YouTube video of that not too long ago. So that is out there. We know that that's how it works. Mm -hmm. And so it's very convincing. And we can be deceived. You know, we deceive ourselves. We don't really see ourselves the way we are. We kind of see ourselves the way we would like to see, like, the way we would like to be. We tend to, you know, want to see ourselves a little better than we probably are. Right. And so we, we buy into these things that, that aren't accurate. So that's astrology. And of course, it is an occult practice and it will lead people into deception. And, you know, it will lead unbelievers further away from Christ. Right. Yeah.